Some of the results were a little bit expected and a few of them were definitely not expected. Let's jump into this. So inkjet cartridges can cost anywhere from $13 to $95 an ounce. Ours today comes in at just under $40 per ounce. And that might not seem super crazy until you compare it to a name brand dye stain that right now runs about $33 a quart or $1.03 per ounce. Keeping in mind, our printer ink would be an astounding $1,277.44 per quart as a comparison. I found by far the easiest way to get the ink out of these cartridges was to just drill a hole where the ink comes out and then drill a little bit of a vent hole in the top and it really just pours right out of there pretty easily. I was actually able to get all the ink out of these cartridges and not totally make a freaking mess all over the place. To start our little experiment, I've prepped just some light colored wood. This happens to be Hackberry. I like the grain in it and it's very light colored. So I think it's gonna take the stain or dye, whatever you wanna call it, very well. So I have quite a few pieces prepped here. I sanded them up to 220. So we're gonna start our experiment with three different options. The first being alcohol dye, alcohol ink. You don't have to use very much of it at all and it gets a very rich color. So after we test out the alcohol ink, next up is what I consider one of the top of the line wood finishes is Osmo. I love this stuff. A lot of people use Rubio Monocoat, which is also fantastic stuff, but I have some Osmo in blue. And then finally, we're gonna use our super high end, super expensive wood dye and compare them all. So up first is our alcohol ink at 100%, not diluted at all. And I'll be honest, I've used this stuff quite a bit, but not in this capacity, of course. And I was surprised by how super, super dark this stuff was. I mean, it was really saturated. After doing the alcohol ink at 100%, I decided that it was probably a good idea to maybe try to weaken it down a little bit and mix some alcohol in just to see if we could lighten it up and get it to actually look blue instead of midnight purple or whatever the color was before. Up next is the Osmo. And again, this is not any type of scientific comparison at all. This stuff is actual wood finish that has the color in it. So once we apply this, it's actually done. Unlike the alcohol ink or any other type of dye where you still need to put some sort of protective coating over it after you're done. Osmo, don't have to do that. Two coats, smooth it out, and it is smooth as silk. Now the one that I'm very anxious for, and I'm sure everybody else is too, and probably the whole reason you're watching this video, can we take this super expensive printer ink, use it as a wood dye, and is it worth a damn? We're about to find out. This one's at 100%, not diluted at all. Wow. First impressions, the color is super vivid. Now, whether it's gonna stay that way or how it's gonna end up, I don't know, but man, first coat, that stuff is bright. Now let's try the magenta. Again, 100%, not diluted at all. Wow, that's bright. Might turn out to be the new thing. Our last sample to test was the yellow, and yes, it was very yellow. It was equally as bright as the other two inkjet colors. Uh, if it stays this way after it dries, it's going to be absolutely amazing. After we let all the test pieces dry overnight, I went ahead and just taped off half of each one of the test boards, sprayed some lacquer on each one of them just to cover up and see what the sheen would be after we sprayed some lacquer, see if there's any bleed through, and see if it offered any sort of protection over the ink and just to see if it would fade, not fade. I had no idea. I just wanted to test half the board and compare it and see what happens. So now it's time to let the lacquer dry and the next day it's time to see the results. Welcome to the day after yesterday and boy, do we have some results. Some of the results were a little bit expected and a few of them were definitely not expected. Let's jump into this. First, we'll start with the commercially made wood finish. This is name brand stuff, Osmo, top of the line. They make them in clear wood finishes, but of course they also make them in colors. This is basically exactly what I expected. Two coats of this on there. This is a hard wax oil finish. The color is very even. It's smooth as silk, and it also offers some protection because this is actually a wood finish and the color all in one. So Osmo for the first one, fantastic color. It's not super bright, but that's not exactly what it's going for. This is the color that exactly it explains on the can. 
But we'll start with the alcohol dye because that stuff is potent, we'll say. So starting with this one, this is just alcohol dye, 100% alcohol dye smeared on this board. And as you can see, this is dark. It almost looks purple. It's very, very dark with the finish. It did blue up a little bit and smooth out. But the big thing with this alcohol ink and uh, really almost all these test subjects on the side that's not treated, it never dries, at least not in a... Hey guys, real quick, future editing Derek here. It turns out these pieces did dry with the exception of the 100% alcohol ink. That one still just rubs off when you touch it, but all the others are completely dry to the touch. I have another sample. This is alcohol dye, because you might say, well, yeah, it's not supposed to be used completely straight. I get it. So we diluted it 50% with alcohol. Still doesn't dry. It's almost the same result. It's just a touch lighter. So then I went to the extreme. I used 90% alcohol and just a few drops of the dye, and that was a much brighter color. But I'll say with, with the alcohol ink, at least on this wood, it's pretty uneven finish. It does not look great at all. Part with the lacquer on it kind of made some green streaks where the brown is showing through. It just doesn't look all that great. And I did do another test of red, 10%, again, 90% alcohol. It looks okay, it's fairly even. It's definitely a bright color, but again, kind of what I expected. Now for the ones that I was really excited to find out what the heck they were gonna do after they dried and after I put finish on it to whether I could even put freaking finish on it. Again, I had no idea. Here they are. The pieces with the very, very expensive wood dye if you were to buy it in large quantities, but we end up using about three, two or three cartridges of each color. I didn't use all of it. I still had some left, like here's the yellow. Uh, there's quite a bit left in there, to be honest. It could have got away with just one cartridge, but I went ahead and did two, just because I had them already set aside for this, and I wasn't ever gonna use those cartridges for anything else. Anyway, check these out. These things are super bright. I mean, freaking like neon bright. They look fantastic. The saturation is great. The color evenness is great. The only downside is, again, it does wipe off still. Maybe if I left it for a couple more days, it would dry completely, but it comes off. Not as bad as the alcohol dye does, but it does come off a little bit. The side that does have lacquer on it, it didn't do anything to the color. It just smoothed it out, put a little bit of gloss on there. They look fantastic. These test pieces were small for a reason. I did not want to use any more than this of this ink because it's expensive. But what if we did? What if we did go bigger? What if we put it on a piece of furniture? What if we put it on my neighbor's porch? I'm open to ideas. What if we did it really big? Be sure to let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some other projects experimented with on this inkjet ink because it was honestly surprising results. The stuff was super bright. It really looked fantastic. And I'm kind of anxious to do some other stuff. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.